Pretty much everything overlaps with politics these days, but we as Christians wouldn't want to have anything to do with getting political, now would we? After all, we don't want anything getting in the way of the gospel, right? Right? Hopefully, you could tell that the intro was dripping with sarcasm. My name is Cody, welcome to Good Monsters, and let's get political, as every faithful Christian should. Now, why would I say that? Can't I just be content to let people be? If they don't want to get political, why drag them into it? Because everything is political. I don't think it used to be that way. I remember when I was much younger and the uh, same-sex marriage debate was on the table. Um, A lot of people, like the argument that I kept hearing a lot was, what business is it of yours, what I do in my bedroom? Just if, you know, if, if I'm gay, let me do what I want and I'll let you do what you want. Let's just leave everybody alone. And boy, I wish that's what the argument was nowadays because nowadays the argument is more like if you are a man and you don't want to date another man who dresses like a woman and is pretending to be a woman and thinks he's a woman, then you're a transphobe. (laughs) If you're a man who doesn't want to date other men, you might be a transphobe. So no longer are we in the realm of you do you and you let me do me. Let's just make our own choices. We're now in the realm of uh, you let me do me and I'm going to force you to do me. (laughs) That was unintentional, but that's funny. So what happened to the liberty to make our own choices? Uh, That that doesn't seem to be really a thing anymore. Think about the biggest issues bouncing around the news today, uh, like abortion, transgenderism, racism, government authority, our rights, the validity of self-defense. Does the Bible have anything to say about any of these things? Yeah, absolutely it does. It has, it has a lot to say about all of those things. Are these things political? Yeah, absolutely. Like you, you as as soon as you hear any of these things, abortion, you think ah, politics. <laughs> when when you think transgenderism, oh man, that's political. Government authority, total one hundred percent political. Rights, political. All these things are political, <clears throat> and yet the Bible has a lot to say about all of these things. Christians, in fact, have a responsibility to have opinions on these things because. The Bible teaches on them. <clears throat> and so we need our opinions need to align with Scripture. And so we don't we don't only have a responsibility to have opinions on these things, but we have a responsibility as Christians to bring the world into alignment with God's will and what the Bible teaches. Meaning, abortion must be abolished. It means transgenderism. We have to live in the real world where transgenderism doesn't exist Uh, a man can't just wake up one day and be a woman if he feels like it men are men women are women and there's no changing that and there's two genders (laughs) all those things are true and we need to live in a world where that's true and we need to bring the world back into alignment where they believe that that's true what about government authority the bible speaks out a lot about government authority Uh, as christians we need to believe that Well, yeah, the government has some authority. They have a sphere of authority and they have responsibilities and they need to do those. Uh, And we need to submit to those right and appropriate, um, submit to the right authority that they do have. But it also means that Jesus is Lord and that there is a realm that's outside of their authority that they could not, uh, they could not get into outside of this sphere that God has given to them of uh, rewarding good, punishing evil, as the Bible says. 
there is no uh, they have no responsibilities outside of that, and we have no responsibility to submit to them outside of that. What about um, our rights? Obviously, uh, the Bible has things to say about things about, about our rights, our liberties. What? Uh, where do do our rights come from? Well, our rights come from God. Even our uh, even our uh, founding fathers admitted that that our rights are give our God given rights are obviously given to us by God. Uh, our inalienable rights. What about? Self-defense, you know, that's popping up in the news a lot recently. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, the Bible has a lot to say about self-defense. Self-defense is a totally valid and reasonable thing. If somebody is trying to harm you, then it is, uh, if if you have no other reasonable choice, then it's totally reasonable to uh, um, fight back, even to the point of death. Totally reasonable thing to do self-defense, even deadly self-defense. Uh, if if that particular thing is called for, and that there is allowances for that in Scripture, <clears throat> so all of these political issues, the Bible has very clear things to say about it. So the question is, why do Christians? Why do so many Christians say, "Well, I don't want to get political," or "I, uh, you know, that's not something I want to get into. I want to focus on." the main issues, whatever those are. Like, I want to be gospel-centered. I want to focus on the gospel. I don't want to get into politics. Or maybe you go to a church that avoids politics because they don't want to be divisive. Let's just focus on the gospel. We don't want to focus on these other things. I think that's a serious problem. I have a theory. I think let's get political doesn't have that... um, doesn't have the actual good connotation that I that I just gave it. I don't think the people who say oh, I don't want to get political or I want to be gospel centered um, for the purpose of like avoiding talking about these so called secondary issues. Uh, I think that that is a smokescreen. I think that that is a way uh, for Christians to appear faithful but really to avoid responsibility that they're given in Scripture. I think it, it holds the appearance of faithfulness because you are you say, oh, I don't want to deal with these secondary issues. I just want to focus on the gospel because we all know as Christians that the gospel is the central and most important thing. So let's not even focus on these other secondary issues like politics. And a lot of these people, they put politics way, 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 way lower on the list than uh, than secondary. And what I mean is, Christians often will not even want to speak about things like abortion uh, because it might offend somebody to call murder murder, you know, or to say that it, scientific reality <laughs> that uh, there are two genders, you know, that that ge- well, that gender isn't even a thing. Gender and sex are are the same. And so let's just call it sex or let's just admit that gender is the same thing as sex, uh, bringing this stupid word gender in the equation allows us to to um, change its definition because somehow there is a, a difference uh, in people's minds between gender and sex. Well, sex is what you're born with, but uh, but but now <laughs> that's that's even unacceptable. It's like, well, no, you're not born a, a man or a woman. You you have to choose. So it really doesn't matter what your body is like. It matters what's inside. Even though if you're a man. Uh, how do you know what a woman feels like? If you feel like you're a woman, or if you're a woman and you feel like you're a man, how do you know that you feel like you're a man if you're not a man? I know what being a man feels like. I don't know what being a woman feels like. I don't know what being a dog feels like, or a cat, or an elephant, um, or a leftist. I don't know what being a leftist feels like. <laughs> they say ignorance is bliss. Anyway, the point is, uh, we have to hold to the biblical positions if we call ourselves a Christian. And we cannot be afraid of doing what people call getting political. And and they put such a negative spin on the term, like it's a horrible thing to get political. And the funny thing usually, I mean, 99% of the time, if not 100% of the time, whenever I've heard this phrase, it has been specifically used to not 
talk about an issue that needs to be talked about. And what they say, like I said, is that, well, we don't want to be divisive. And I've talked about this in previous episodes of the podcast, but how, how is admitting that murdering an innocent human being, how is that divisive? How is admitting that murdering an innocent human being is wrong is divisive? How is that? It you, you could say it's divisive, but it's divisive with the right kinds of things. There is a There are good things to divide with and there are bad things to divide with. Because the thing is, if you're avoiding talking about issues that you need to talk about, what you're dividing with is the truth. What you're dividing with is unity with scriptural truth. And you're trading that for not dividing with sin and with people who have uh, have totally off the wall unbiblical opinions. You're 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 sacrificing truth for lies. That's literally what you're doing. You have to divide with something. You have to. Either you're dividing with the truth or you're dividing with lies. In a church, if there is sin in your church, a lot of people say, I don't want to confront this sin because that that will divide the church. That'll split up the church. But if you're not disciplining sin, you're disciplining righteousness. It's not like you can you can choose to uh, to there's there's no balance here. It's one or the other. It's black and white. Either you're disciplining sin or you're disciplining righteousness. Either you're dividing with sin or you're dividing with righteousness. There there's no middle ground here. So I think that's what this phrase, well, I don't want to get political, and even often the phrase, the much more dangerous phrase, I think, gospel-centered is. Now, of course, as Christians, all of us want to be gospel-centered. That's a wonderful thing to be. We want the gospel, as it should be, to be the center of our theology, the center of our faith, the most important um, characterization of our theology and beliefs. We want to be gospel centered, but the but the 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 reality is, if we are gospel centered, that gospel has to spread out into every other aspect of our lives. It's like a drop in a pool where the ripples go out and affect even the very edges of the pool. The gospel spreads into everything. Now we can say the gospel, we can think that we understand the gospel. We can even preach the gospel at our church faithfully on Sundays. This is something that I've been thinking about recently. The gospel can be preached, I think, even, I don't want to say faithfully preached, but the gospel can be be faithfully preached as far as it goes. But that gospel that message of repentance and salvation and and faith alone in Jesus uh, could, where we carry it can be to uh, more appropriate or less appropriate places. What I mean by that is you can preach the gospel and say, believe in Jesus and be saved. And your church can be filled with people with with certain sins. You can have, uh, like let's say, your church in particular has a huge issue with gossip. If your pastor is up every Sunday preaching the gospel faithfully insofar as it goes, but he is not carrying the gospel to the gossip, then actually that's not faithfully preaching the gospel. You know what I mean? You can you can say the right words, but if you carry it to the wrong places, then you're not actually faithfully preaching the gospel because you're not allowing the gospel to enter into every uh, every nook and cranny that it that it needs to. You're not carrying that message to the particular parts of the lives of its listeners. Which is why Christians need, have a responsibility, a requirement to have opinions about politics and to enter into, when appropriate, political discussions. You know, sometimes, I mean, you don't want to go around preaching the good news of conservatism. (laughs) You want to go around preaching the good news of Jesus, but that needs to affect 
people's social views and views on um, issues like abortion and same-sex marriage and transgenderism uh, or, or the illusion of transgenderism, let's say. The gospel has an impact on everything. And so to say you're gospel-centered in a way that, that excuses you from talking about certain subjects is actually the opposite of being gospel-centered. It means that you are actually disregarding the gospel. It means that you are compartmentalizing the gospel in a small little closet in your life. It's not in the center of your life. If it's in the center of your life, it would ripple out to everything else, including your politics, including everything. And the thing is, it, there, there's really now, there's no distinction between religion and politics in a lot of ways. Because it's not like Christianity has to walk over here and then enter into the abortion discussion. But Christianity fundamentally, like, you know, it's in the Ten Commandments. Don't murder. You know, it's, it's uh, the issue of abortion is so central to Christian beliefs <laughs> that it's not like we have to go very far to have to talk about abortion. Abortion is, a, is very close to being a central issue. The fact that there is merely man and woman that exists and no other concocted genders uh, is not far off from the center so we don't have to go far with, uh, with our Christianity to, uh, to know that we have to have opinions on abortion and same-sex marriage and, and transgenderism and rights and self-defense and these things. They're all, they're all very obvious and they're all very close to center. So really, like I said, it's being th- these people who, who will use this thing as an excuse to say, I'm gospel-centered, I, I want to avoid talking about these things. It's the opposite of being gospel-centered. It's actually unfaithfulness disguised as faithfulness, well, which is what we would expect. You know, <laughs> unfaithfulness uh, rarely is obvious. Uh, Jesus said, watch out for wolves in the flock. Um, these wolves aren't always obvious. These wolves will tickle your ears and they will seem like wonderful shepherds. They'll seem like your brothers and sisters, uh, but they're spreading lies and they're spreading poison and it's hard to see for the flock and many will be deceived. You know, that's the kind of thing that we hear about false teaching in the Bible. And, and so what else would we be seeing? We, we would be seeing people pretending to be faithful Christians who are actually totally the opposite. They're saying, oh, I just want to focus on the gospel. I just want to focus on Jesus. And they're doing exactly the opposite. They're, they're putting Jesus in a little tiny box and not letting him transform your whole life, but just letting him transform uh, two hours on Sunday mornings of your life. Not only are these people who... who often will say, oh, I don't want to get political or I'm gospel-centered. Not only are they guilty of lying, but they're guilty of hypocrisy. Like in the last episode, I, I talked about um, a, well, I, I talked about a similar issue where people will, uh, they'll, they'll twist scripture for their own agenda, which is, which is worse than just having the bad opinion alone. It, it's far worse because not only are they guilty of the untruth itself, but they're guilty of actually knowingly, intentionally using the truth, using by the Bible, using the word of God, twisting its meaning intentionally and applying it to you in order to uh, force you to do what they want in some way. In the last episode, what I talked about was uh, people using Romans 13 and uh, the Bible verses to say, well, you need to submit to everything the government tells you to. Like I talked about earlier in this episode, there is a sphere and the government can't step outside of that. And the Bible's clear about that. But these people will forget that because they want you to do what they want you to do. They want you to comply with them. So you need to submit to these mandates because I say so. It doesn't really matter what God's word says because they can twist it and take verses out of context and make it mean whatever they want. Which is why gospel-centered is such a slippery, slimy phrase on the tongues of some people because it sounds righteous and properly 
used, it is righteous. Because like I said, we want to be gospel-centered. We want to be able to have a clear distinction between um, non-Christian issues, non-central issues, issues that Scripture doesn't speak on. And then other issues that Scripture is very clear on. And that's what people try to communicate with this political thing. But like I was saying with how, um, how, how central a lot of these issues are to Christianity, I, I, I don't think it used to be that way. I, like I said uh, at the beginning of the episode, like with same-sex marriage, the idea was, well, you just you stay out of my life and I'll stay out of your life. But it's, it's that politics have become more religious over time. It's not that Christianity is becoming more political. It's that politics are becoming more religious. Christianity, in fact, has always been political. Uh, I, I heard recently that Christmas, the birth of Jesus, is the greatest insurrection in history. It is that a Lord is born who is the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. No Lord is above Jesus. No King is above Jesus. And he is the Lord over all Lords. He's the Lord over Joe Biden. He's the Lord over Caesar. He's the Lord over every world power that ever existed and ever will exist. And that's something that world leaders don't like the sound of because they want to be the leader. And they are the leader of their country, but really Jesus is the leader over them and their country and everything else. And so this is a proper understanding of the lordship of Jesus and a proper understanding of scripture uh, and then a proper understanding of where exactly what what scripture talks about and where scripture touches uh, is is very very important um, because we we want to have these distinctions between things that scripture talks about and scripture doesn't talk about but the thing is because because politics is the, the politics in our nation anyway is directly attacking a lot of very basic, simple Christian beliefs, like the ones I've already mentioned. Politics is becoming religious. And so if Christians, you know, 50 years ago said, well, I don't want to get political because the Bible doesn't talk about uh, what kind of economic system is best. Although I think it kind of does. Like we, there are <laughs> economics laid out in the Bible. But if a person wants to say like, well, you know, the, uh, economic policy and foreign policy. I don't want to get political. I just want to, you know, that's not my realm. I want to focus on the Bible. You know, maybe that's fine, but you cannot keep using that reasoning because politics is is bleeding its way into uh, Christianity's territory. It's bleeding its way into um, more than ever, it seems, in our country, at least morality and and it always did, I think. It always did impact um, a lot of moral issues. But now it seems to impact more than ever, especially as, as our government is growing and gaining more, um, thinks it's gaining more power over our lives uh, and a, a more watchful eye um, than it, it affects us in those ways more than it ever has. And so that just means that Christianity has more of a say over these things that are happening in politics more than it ever has because the um, they're overlapping more than ever. There was, oh, this reminds me of, uh, I was reading through uh, Genesis this week for a Bible study that I'm doing. And I got to the part in Genesis chapter 37 where uh, Joshua's brothers want to kill him and which is a very evil thing, obviously. They're trying to come up with ways to kill him, and they're like, well, let's like dump him in a pit and leave him to die. And then some traitors come by. And it says in Genesis 37, 26 through 27, Judah, Judah said to his brothers, what will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him. After all, he is our brother our own flesh and blood. So the interesting thing that I noticed is that this comes right after their plot to kill Joseph. They're, they're wanting to kill Joseph. And then this band of Ishmaelites comes by and they said, oh, well, 
I know we just said we wanted to kill Joseph, but actually, Joseph is our brother. He is our flesh and blood. Let's not kill him because we're the good guys here. We're trying to do righteous. So let's just sell him. (laughs) How hypocritical. How snakish. They are trying to turn this horribly evil thing they're doing into something good. And that's what we see in a lot of churches. That's what we see in in the lives of a lot of professing Christians. They will appear righteous when in reality they are very much the opposite. And sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. But the more you are aware of these things, the easier it is to see. I posted a video on Instagram uh, the other day about um, professing Christians who are also leftists and One girl commented, and one woman, girl, I don't know, doesn't matter. One one person commented, uh, having an objection with what I was saying, like, "Oh, you're you're demeaning a whole group of people. That's not very godly, are you?" And I was I was saying how basically what I'm saying now. There's a problem with Christians who say that. um, Well, well, in, in the case of the video, there's a problem with Christians who say that they support things like abortion and same-sex marriage and don't take the Bible seriously and um, don't want to apply the Bible to our lives. And she's like, whoa, 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 whoa. You are really demeaning people who call themselves leftists here. That's not very Christ-like of you. <laughs> and then and then I was like, okay, well, what do you think about abortion and same-sex marriage? And where I was going with that is, well, if you disagree with those things, then you have to disagree with the people who agree with those things. And you have to admit that they're wrong and you have to be willing to change their minds if you call yourself a Christian. And then her response to that was, well, I don't like politics or I don't care about politics. She said something like that. And and it was ridiculous on multiple avenues. One, because of the topic that I'm discussing right now, which is Christians have to care about politics. But the other thing is, she literally commented on my post, which was about politics. And if she didn't care about politics, she wouldn't have had an opinion, would she? (laughs) There's a lot of hypocrisy in the world. And we have to be able to see through it. So we have to practice and we have to inoculate ourselves uh, by understanding these arguments that other people use and be able to see through the the disguises because there are... There are wolves in sheep's clothing. Sometimes they're easier to see than others. Sometimes they have books on your library shelf, like in your own home. Sometimes the books you own might be by these wolves in sheep's clothing. I have been shocked these past couple of years with the number of very famous evangelical leaders um, that I've heard of for myself personally that are like, whoa, they're actually teaching some pretty unfaithful stuff. Uh, And I either respected them or I've known a lot of people who respect them uh, or I've even owned owned the books of some. And that's shocking to me, but the more I'm, the more my eyes are being opened to this and a lot of people's eyes (laughs) were opened to, to this kind of thing in these people a long, long time ago. But the events of the past couple of years with the country and the way certain pastors and evangelical leaders are speaking out against these things, it's becoming more and more obvious who are the snakes or the wolves and who are the sheep, who are the sons of God and who are the sons of the devil, who are the people pretending to be sons of God and who are the people who are actually um, the real sons of God. It's becoming more and more obvious. So for you, make sure you're being sincere in your Uh, beliefs and in your faith. Don't twist scripture and don't let anybody else do it either. See through their lies.